Adobe's very cautious gambit to inject AI into everything. Last fall, Adobe Incorporated offered select photographers from its vast network of seasoned professionals the opportunity to shoot 1,000 photos of bananas. For $60. Another commission called for snapshots of flags, in real-life situations, and one paying $80 sought hundreds of close-ups of mouths chewing food. One assignment for pet portraits requested a minimum of 500 JPEGs of various dog and cat breeds, specifying that none should be shown, wearing any clothing. These very targeted missions, as Adobe generously referred to them in the job briefings, weren't to meet a sudden demand for fruit slash piehole slash house pet photos, but as necessary raw material to feed Firefly, its new, flagship artificial intelligence product released in beta last March. At the time, AI art generators Midjourney and Dolly had already gone viral as futuristic playthings for both artists and the visually inept. Suddenly anyone could turn a cocktail of words into unervingly realistic images, be that a much-publicized deepfake of Donald Trump getting arrested or a viral collage of a bottle of ranch testifying in court, which, somehow, really did look like salad dressing reeling under cross-examination. Whereas Midjourney Incorporated and other generative AI startups indiscriminately swallowed data from across the internet to power their machines' imaginations, an intellectual property fiasco, Adobe mainly trained Firefly on Adobe Stock, its database of 300 million stock photos and other visuals that are often licensed to marketers and media companies for ads and articles. But Firefly needed even more photos of everyday items so it could tackle scenes its engine was still struggling with and give its output less of an infomercial, Hampton in Glaze. Adobe envisioned Firefly becoming the new tool designers and businesses used to produce branding campaigns, product packaging concepts and more, and said its limitations would prove an advantage. Unlike its competitors, the app refuses prompts that include public figures, Trump, for example, certain words, arrested, and even brands, Hidden Valley Ranch. Instead of manifesting images of a commercial condiment, it offers bucolic pastorals. But where creatives might see blandness in what should be the wildest digital revolution in decades, Adobe executives see its sexiest feature, liability protection. The legal department in many large enterprises kicks in every time their design department wants to use Firefly or any model. They say, no, 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 says Alexandru Kostin, Adobe's vice president for AI products. When Kostin clarifies to customers that Adobe's commercially safe approach provides IP guards, including legal support if anyone tries to sue, the mood changes. They're like, wow. This is really different. Predictability may sound like an uninspired goal but the pioneer of Photoshop and the PDF has built its software empire largely by serving as the utilitarian bridge between the imaginative and the corporate. For much of its existence, Adobe has crushed its competition by sucking creative professionals inside its editing software ecosystem. Despite cheaper and less complex alternatives, graphic designers, advertisers, publishers, photographers and videographers have never been able to wean themselves off Adobe. It's long been the default at companies that hire or commission them, and it takes forever to master. Leaving what Adobe calls its content supply chain to learn less ubiquitous software is often just not worth the hassle. So creatives begrudgingly shell out $720 per year for the full Creative Cloud suite, with these kinds of subscriptions accounting for a majority of Adobe's $19.4 billion annual revenue. Now, as artists gush over Midjourney and Dolly as dreamscape factories and fabricators of the surreal, Adobe is selling AI as a software add-on. Pump out inspirational ideas with Firefly, perfect them with Photoshop. It's really in the interfaces that this magic comes to life, says Shantanu Narayan, Adobe's chief executive officer. Some Adobe employees have worried that the company's hold on creative professionals has left it slumbering toward AI, treating it not as an existential threat but as just another good enough feature to keep customers paying. Younger artists are gravitating toward simpler design apps such as Figma, which Adobe recently tried to acquire for $20 billion in a gambit to refresh its reputation, only for the deal to fall apart under regulatory pressure. Midjourney doesn't have an app, or even much of an interface, 
the service is run through the social network Discord, where users type prompts into a chat window that spits back AI graphics. With Firefly, Adobe needs to persuade its millions of loyal customers to use its new product, without fear it will eventually replace them. Speaking at an Adobe event in October, Jamie Derringer, a paid ambassador for the company, reiterated to the crowd of creatives why Adobe will never fully automate what they do. If AI replaces all of us, Adobe will not have a conference, she said. There'll be nobody to use their software and pay the bills. Adobe doesn't consider itself a latecomer to AI. In 2016, at its annual developer conference, an Adobe researcher revealed on stage how a deep learning prototype could identify skies in photos and, with a simple click, replace them with clouds or sunshine, while auto-blending the new lighting with foreground objects. It looks amusingly simple in retrospect, but at the time, the crowd roared. The company has a long history of breakthroughs. Founded in 1982 by Sudentai scientists from Xerox's famed Palo Alto Research Center, Adobe first invented a programming language called PostScript that enabled computers to communicate with printers. In the early 1990s it introduced the portable document format, which was designed to replace paper altogether. Adobe charged a minimum of $195 for tools to edit the files and businesses and government agencies later swooned about savings on printing costs. The IRS loved it, John Warnock, Adobe's co-founder, once said. Warnock passed away in 2023, with the company saying one of his last conversations with current CEO Narayan was about Firefly. Adobe was originally worried that another product unveiled back around then, Photoshop, would barely sell 500 copies a month. Graphic designers I knew were so against it, says photographer Doug Menuez, who remembers Adobe inviting the painter David Hockney to its offices to teach him the software and convert him into something of a proto-influencer for digital art. Photoshop won over customers by cramming each release with features to eliminate the drudgery of editing, such as buttons for easily cloning pixels and manipulating distinct layers of an image. The company was also aggressive in acquisitions. Its mid-1990s purchase of Aldous Corporation killed a Photoshop competitor and gave Adobe the foundation for InDesign, now the dominant poster and magazine layout system. In 2005 a $3.4 billion acquisition of Macromedia knocked out another rival, this time to Adobe Illustrator, its drawing app, and gave the company a stronghold in web publishing with products including Dreamweaver and Flash. Around this time, Adobe even threatened to sue Microsoft Corporation for planning to add a Save as PDF option in Office. Microsoft axed the feature after Adobe demanded a fee for its usage, the companies have since made peace. The more complementary applications Adobe offered, the more it could package them together and charge premium prices to publishers and design agencies. Some bundles went for around $2,000 making them a common target of software piracy among students and freelancers. Narayan, who rose from an engineering manager at Adobe to become CEO in 2007, transitioned the company from software sales to recurring subscriptions in 2012, setting off a backlash among creatives already feeling gouged. An unscientific poll at the time from CNET and analyst company Jeffrey's Financial Group Incorporated found that 93% of 1,642 users surveyed would seek alternatives to Adobe products. But few followed through, Adobe surpassed 1.4 million subscribers by the end of 2013, and its stock hit an all-time high. Subscriptions continued rising despite loads of free or low-cost substitutes available in Apple Incorporated, S and Google's app stores. By then Photoshop had become a disparaging verb signaling faked or exaggerated visuals, and even Hockney called its polished output boring. Canva Incorporated took off, thanks to its web-based tool that liberated users from Adobe's product bloat. Snapchat and Instagram started releasing impressive image filters. Adobe tried and failed to match the ease of use of the new services. We were just wildly unsuccessful says Adobe General Counsel Dana Rao of the product XD, which competed with Figma. And yet Adobe's paying audience grew, 
reaching beyond 10 million in the late 2010s. When Adobe heralded AI at that 2016 developer conference, it wasn't so much touting its business next frontier as trying to counter years-old criticism that its software had become too complicated and expensive. Narayan was pitching machine learning as an efficiency tool for completing once manual tasks in seconds rather than minutes. Ever since, new Whizbang AI kept coming to Photoshop, such as FaceAware Liquify, which enabled users to balloon eyes and widen smiles quickly in portraits. Neural filters, added in 2020, let users drag a slider to adjust a face's age and shift expressions from joy to anger. Although these images didn't look much more sophisticated than police sketches, Maria Yap, Adobe's vice president for digital imaging, boasted at the time that Photoshop is the world's most advanced AI application. In July 2022, OpenAI announced it was making DALL-E available to a million people on its waitlist, promising them full commercial rights to any text-to-image creation. Its release sent a shock wave of panic through Adobe's senior ranks, according to a former employee, who, like many of the dozen-plus engineers, executives, designers, photographers and ambassadors who have worked on Firefly and who spoke with Bloomberg Businessweek, requested anonymity to candidly discuss the technology's development. Emails flew between employees about the wild AI creations going viral on social media. Rao remembers Ely Greenfield, chief technology officer of digital media, messaging him awestruck. He was just like, oh my god, Dolly, Rao says. That's when he would talk to me like, we're gonna build this for Adobe. It was a necessary slap in the face. Beyond incremental Photoshop features such as sky replacement, several current and former employees say it had felt impossible to get promising AI projects out of Adobe's research labs and into its products. According to one former employee, at a presentation in 2019 warning of the disruption generative tools could cause Creative Cloud, Scott Belsky, now Adobe's chief strategy officer, appeared unfazed, asking if the technology could instead somehow be used to improve Photoshop tutorials for new users. Belsky says AI has long been a priority at the company, but it's also his job to make sure new technologies aren't released until they're actually commercially ready. Being the best in market is more important than being first, he recalls reminding his teams. Others worried about cannibalization. If Adobe pushed too far with AI features, people might think the company was using technology to replace the same creatives who powered its business. Artists were interviewed about their fears and hopes throughout the development process, says Samantha Warren, an Adobe design director. Other researchers asked questions such as whether using generative AI felt like cheating. A small team of researchers experimented with rudimentary text-to-image tools, but the results, based on an older generation of machine learning, were iffy. One ex-employee describes Adobe's AI around 2021 as more text-to-mangled pixels. That year, Dolly won praise for its first public preview which could produce what looked like children's doodles from prompts such as, an illustration of a baby daikon radish in a tutu walking a dog. But whereas OpenAI and its partner, Microsoft, were spending hundreds of millions of dollars on chips and cloud infrastructure to refine their training models so they could deliver better-looking radishes or tutus or dogs, Adobe higher-ups resisted allocating such expensive computing power, current and former employees say. It was only after the soaring popularity of Dolly e and Midjourney that Adobe got serious about building what would become Firefly. Even then, the company was focused publicly on its $20 billion acquisition of Figma, announced in September 2022. Restrictions on the use of expensive computing power weren't eased until the end of that year as the company finally grasped that it needed to swallow the huge costs to catch up in AI, according to people working on the project. Hundreds of employees were pulled from other teams to work on Firefly, some feeling they were gearing up for war. This is the most important priority right now, David Wadwani, who oversees the company's digital media business and spearheaded the proposed Figma deal, recalls thinking. Still, Adobe, which has tons of corporate clients, had to play by different copyright rules than its rivals. So it turned to its database of stock photos. 
but drawing from a severely limited dataset of made-for-marketing images, compared with the billions of images AI startups had seemingly unscrupulously scraped from the internet, produced a creepy aesthetic. According to current and former employees working on the project, they even supplemented Firefly with poorly lit, more authentic-looking photos and video stills from freely licensed databases online just to give its AI engine a sense of reality. Because AI tends to amplify society's most toxic impulses, replicating racist, violent or just advertiser-unfriendly concepts, Adobe also had to keep its images safe enough for commercial clients. It tried to stop radioactive visuals by blocking words such as, guns, criminals, cocaine, and vomit. In Firefly, you can have, cigarettes, but not alongside, kids, as some terms are flagged only in tandem. Teenager drinking a bottle of vodka, returns photos of high schoolers holding water bottles. This blacklist grew rapidly as employees stress-tested the internal beta with prompts for dicey images. Adobe wanted to avoid the kind of controversy Microsoft would later find itself in, when its AI tools came under fire for apparently being used to generate fake nudes of celebrities including Taylor Swift. Demographic representation was another challenge. To make sure common nouns such as doctor, teacher, and family avoid racial and gender stereotypes, Adobe modifies the language of search prompts, says one former Firefly engineer. For example, in Firefly, the word doctor can be invisibly tweaked to add identity modifiers such as black or woman, the engineer adds, with the demographic mix set to reflect whatever country a user is in. Eventually, localization will kick in, too, so a user in Japan who types in breakfast could see rice and miso soup instead of ham and eggs. In short, using Firefly can feel like designing with a lawyer at your shoulder. When it first appeared in March 2023, it was received as a clunky, corporate imitator. Its creations all included a gaudy watermark in the corner, and its only distinction seemed to be brand safety. NVIDIA Corporation senior research scientist Jim Fan tweeted comparison shots of prompts to Firefly and Midjourney for images featuring a Ferrari and Pikachu. Midjourney nailed both but Firefly created photos of a basic sports car and a yellowy rat monster instead of a Pokemon. It was only that spring, when Adobe integrated Firefly with a Photoshop beta, enabling users to generate images and automatically enhance photos with AI from within the program rather than a separate app, that heads finally turned. The most exciting feature automated the tedious manual process of expanding a photo and then having to duplicate its background to fill the new space, Firefly could take a vertical image of a person standing among skyscrapers, make it horizontal, then instantly produce a perfectly lighted city with matching architecture behind it. Users shared Firefly-powered reinventions of famous record albums, the Beatles' Abbey Road transformed into a galactic street scene, the baby swimming on the cover of Nirvana's Nevermind dropped into an ocean with sharks, creating the technology's first viral moment. Firefly wasn't making copyrighted materials, just modifying them, so Adobe wasn't bothered. By July, Firefly had been used to generate more than 1 billion images. Adobe's scale all but ensured rapid adoption. Andy Allen, co-founder of Paper, an iPad sketching app, says artists keep coming back to Adobe because they're so accustomed to its products and it's still super tedious to edit images in Midjourney and Dolly. To adjust the lighting of an image or alter content in one of the other generators, users generally have to keep modifying the text prompt itself. I'm not sure if anyone in the creative field is seeing what Adobe is doing as truly cutting-edge, Alan says. They just packaged Firefly well into a tool we all already own. Stephen Frieder, chief revenue officer of Adobe says it's experimenting with dozens of companies across hospitality, media and retail, noting that a brand can now instantly, and legally, alter a photo backdrop without the need for a costly reshoot. Chris Down, Mattel Incorporated's chief design officer, says his designers brainstorm using AI tools such as Dolly or Viscom, but for finished products they'll use only Firefly. Even so, Down says, they're still cautious, 
deploying the technology just to replace small generic elements, such as mailboxes or rocks that might appear on a box for a Barbie house or Hot Wheels set. Perhaps the biggest risk for Adobe is if courts and lawmakers decide copyright concerns don't apply to AI training. It's an outcome that Adobe lawyer Rao acknowledges is a strong possibility given how liberally U.S. courts interpret the concept of fair use, a legal exception that allows the use of copyrighted materials in a completely novel way. In that case, brands could ditch Firefly and flock to better AI, though that's a scenario Rao is confident will still end up with them crawling back to Adobe to polish their work. Last summer, Davide Angelini was shooting a couple jogging at a lake near where he lives in Rimini, on Italy's Adriatic coast. He's consistently ranked in the top 10 for sales on Adobe stock and prides himself on his ability to orchestrate large lifestyle photo shoots that sell well online, typically earning around $76,132 a year in licensing fees. But as computer-generated pictures have taken off, Angelini has a grimmer view of his professional future. His earnings edged down as Adobe stock was flooded with AI-generated imagery last year. The platform was the first major one to allow the sale of pictures generated with AI, not just by Firefly, but all Adobe's competitors, too, a move that puts them in an awkward position given its conservative legal stance. The influx of images and creators will likely further devalue the work of existing artists, Angelini says. It's like when photography was born and it took the job of painters. Wall Street expects Adobe to be among the first big tech companies to actually profit from AI. In a recent analyst report, research company William Blair and Company forecast that Adobe will earn $5.4 billion in additional annual recurring revenue by 2028 for upselling subscriptions with more AI features and selling Firefly as a standalone product. That should more than offset the $1 billion a year Adobe loses out on from the onset of AI the analysts figure, such as from creatives being fired and no longer needing to pay for its software. Adobe is also working on selling a chat GPT-like dialogue offering in PDFs, 400 billion of which are opened every year. To get there will require Adobe to continue feeding off the work of its stock contributors, many of whom are surprised to learn they're helping train a model that's already begun to replace them. Adobe says its stock contributor terms are there in plain sight, upload a photo, and the company has license to use the assets to develop new features, though it never explicitly mentions AI. In September it issued retroactive bonuses for contributors who often didn't realize they had signed up to help develop Firefly. Adobe refused to share how long it will offer the annual payouts or how it calculates them, some of which were as low as $70. We're not saying, here's the formula we used, and plug in your numbers, and here's how you got paid, says Ashley Still, who oversees Adobe's creative cloud business. A co-founder of a stock agency representing hundreds of photographers was confused when a payment for less than $2,500 arrived from Adobe late last year, without details about which or how many of its artists' photos were used for Firefly training. This person fears what automation will mean for human creativity. Data scientists don't know squat about photography or art, says the co-founder, who requested anonymity out of fear of compromising their relationship with Adobe, a major client. Job angst became a core theme of Adobe's developer conference in October, where droves of designers, filmmakers and influencers descended on the Los Angeles Convention Center to hear about Adobe's latest AI features. In one demo, the company showed how its video editor could soon remove a suited gentleman's tie in real time, to the shock of Hollywood types already anxious about what post-production positions AI might eliminate. There's gonna be disruption, Narayan acknowledges. But in the grand scheme of things, those who have the passion, those who have the interest, and those who have the drive, they're going to find it augmenting their way to make a living. At the lake in Italy, unexpected rain was ruining Angelini's shoot, and the joggers, paid models, were getting cold. He took a moment to decompress and browsed a few stock library sites including Adobe's for inspiration. All the bestsellers were made by AI. One year ago it was all real photos, Angelini recalls. He found himself wondering, 
Why am I here spending money and time when I could be at home making pictures with Mid Journey for free?